I had this grand plan. Learn After Effects in five minutes. But I quickly realized that you can't really learn After Effects in five minutes. But you can learn how to do like a very simple animation and, and the basics in five minutes. But I couldn't do that. I had to spend another 25 minutes just showing you all of those extra things that I feel like I would be cheating you if I didn't show you. So right now we're just going to go over the basics of After Effects, the core kind of principles and tools that make it an industry standard. And I'm going to show you how these things are used in order to make something simple like this adorable cow animation. I'll put some links in the description. If you want to like or comment, definitely subscribe to this channel. Tell me what kind of videos you want to see. You know, I could do more tutorials if you want. I could do more vlogs. I could just do random shit, but um, I'd love to hear from you. So, cheers. Here we go. All right, everybody. Here we are in After Effects. If you see a screen like this, click on New Project. And over here in what's called the Project Panel, I'm going to right-click and go to Import and File. And this way you can bring in, you know, pictures or video or sound or whatever you want i'm going to click import and you can see here's my uh, file here with a little bit of uh, information about it and i'm going to click on new composition here and composition is just what after effects calls your canvas or you know the place where you arrange things and do all your work you can rename your composition you can change the size the frame rate and all sorts of things i'm going to click ok and you can see my composition is now over here as well and I'm going to take my file here, my JPEG, and just drag it in. And you can see it'll give me a little outline. And you can see that it's a little bit smaller than the size of the composition. Uh, if I go down here to the cow.jpg layer and I click on it and hit the S key on the keyboard, you'll see it'll bring up the scale properties. And I'm going to click and drag and we'll scale the cow up a little bit. If you hold control and click and drag, you can drag with decimal points, which makes things a little more exact. It's kind of nice. You can also click and drag and move things in the composition window here. And you can tell what's selected by the little dots around the outside. So I want to animate this cow starting kind of off the screen and slides on and kind of moves at you maybe. So if I, uh, if I make sure this cow layer is clicked on, and I press P, that'll bring up the position properties. These are just hotkeys I'm using, but if you ha uh, hit this little drop down, you'll be able to find all of the uh, different properties that you can animate. And uh, if you see this little stopwatch to the left, that means you can animate it. And almost everything down here, you'll be able to animate. So I think it'll take about two seconds for our cow to slide his head into the comp here. So I'm going to drag my timeline indicator over to two seconds here. I'm going to place a position keyframe there. And you'll see I have a keyframe now. It's a little diamond. The stopwatch is now blue. And that just means there's a keyframe on that property somewhere. I also have a couple icons down here. I can navigate between keyframes and I can also add keyframes with this one. For example, if I go back to zero seconds and I'm gonna add a keyframe here uh, by clicking this middle button, that'll add a keyframe. And I basically want him to start all the way to the left here and completely out of the composition. You can see After Effects shows us the animation path up here and yeah, keyframes are just like they sound like. They're like important frames in the composition where key things happen. And at zero seconds we want him at a certain position, at two seconds we want him at another, and After Effects just fills in what's between. And uh, if I hit the space bar, that's just regular, regular playback. And there it is, your first After Effects animation. One nice thing that I do with keyframes all the time, because uh, right now this, this move is very mechanical, um, I like to do something called Easy Ease with the keyframes. It's, it's slightly advanced, but I do it almost all the time, and it really makes your animations look good. I'm going to drag a box around and select both of these keyframes, and I'm going to right-click on one of them and go to Keyframe Assist and Easy Ease. And you'll see our keyframe icons kind of change here, and you can go into the graph editor here, which allows us to control the speed of this animation over time. You might see a curved graph here. Uh, if you don't, you just go down to this button here and make sure you're on Edit Speed Graph. Basically what's going on here is this is what's called the animation curve of how fast that cow moves over time. So if I, if I start here, um, you see kind of kind of slows to a stop and a start. Now let's compare it to what we had before. I'm going to take this easy ease off. Control Z is a great shortcut to undo things, by the way. 
see how the keyframes change back to diamonds? If I go back into the graph editor, you see now my graph is a little different. This is a, a hard start and then stop. You know, so he go, he's going from 100% speed all the way down to 0% speed within one frame. Here, look at the way the cow stops moving. See that ending? It's just not like smooth. So again, if I, if I select the keyframes and I right click and I go to Easy Ease, you can see that graph changes. And now you can see there's like a little bit of a softer stop. And that's because you can see on the graph it's going from 0% speed gradually up to 100 and then back down to 0. If you select uh, and drag with these handles, you can actually really exaggerate this. So now he's only going to be at maximum speed, just kind of in this center area, and you can see how that changes the animation. So that's kind of a cool thing that I'm doing with all my keyframes all the time. Doing that's a, a nice little extra step, but you know it's not 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 something completely necessary. Uh, so let me show you really quick how to cut something out. If I uh, if I go up here to the toolbar at the top and I click Pen Tool, um, maybe we want to like separate this cow from the background. I want to make sure my cow layer is clicked on down here. So that way After Effects knows that you know this is the layer I want to work with. <clears throat> I'm gonna click this drop down menu here and you know maybe look at like 50%. That way I see a little bit of the outside. I can also scroll with my mouse wheel too. Um, and now that I have the Pen Tool. You can see my icon here is now a pen tool because I have it clicked on up here and I'm just gonna dry, you know make a bunch of points around the cow and kind of cut him out if I take a point and I click and I drag and get kind of a little curve that I can you know alter which is like a nice little thing I'm not gonna do its horns right now uh, you know just because you know I'm trying to do this quick for you guys here but you can see how the bezier points are a, a help when you're trying to draw a mask Especially because you can go back and edit all of this stuff later. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Once you connect that last point to the first point, there he is. Now you can see he's separated and that background is gone. I just basically masked it out that background. There's a little button down here. If I click on this, you can see uh, he's actually on a transparent background. This is actually a pretty good example of why this transparency button is important. If I click this background back on, I can see there's a little bit of... Uh, I didn't do a very good job here. If I click on the cow and I drop these layers down, you'll see now in addition to these transform properties, I have a masks property too. And there's uh, some good ones down here. I use mask feather all the time and sometimes mask expansion. I just want to tweak the mask path a little bit here. So I'm going to make sure I have my selection tool selected. And you can see all these points around the masks are squares and that means I have the whole mass selected. If I click in the middle they turn to circles that means I can select kind of one at a time and just fix up my mask here as I need to. You know if, and if you wanted to get if you wanted to get really creative <clears throat> you know maybe you want his ear to like grow on or something yeah sounds weird but uh, you can actually animate the mask so if I make a keyframe here and then let's go forward to like maybe three seconds you know I'll make another keyframe here um, there's no change in them right now, but I'm going to go back. If I'm on this first keyframe, oops, I'm going to click on this little guy here to jump me to that keyframe. <clears throat> if I'm on just this keyframe and now I alter the mask a little bit, you know, let's just kind of make his ear just a little bump. I mean, I think you see what I'm gonna, what I'm getting at here, you know. And in between these two keyframes, you know, his ear can just kind of grow on. I'm gonna turn this transparency off. It's a little easier to see. You can see his ear just grow on now. Hello. <clears throat> Maybe he's like listening for something. So yeah, that's like a quick overview of uh, you know animation and masking. I know there's there's a ton of buttons and things going on, but you know this the goal here is just kind of get you guys started in uh, some of the basic stuff. One shortcut that I use all the time is is if I click on something and I hit U, that'll bring up all the keyframes that are on that layer. Because sometimes I forget where all the keyframes are. 
And I just want to get rid of this, these keyframes that are making his ear grow. It was just kind of a demonstration. So if I click, if I click this little blue stopwatch here, it'll get rid of all the keyframes on that line, which is a nice little tool. So, yeah, just uh, just the position keyframes now. So I think the next thing I want to do is uh, I want to put like let's make like a speech bubble, and we'll put like the word moo in it you know like he like he comes in and, and says moo all right so i'm going to right click down here and go to new shape layer and you'll see a shape layer show up down in the timeline here now, shape layers are cool because they're like layers that you can put other shapes inside of and then rearrange and you know get them interacting with each other so it's kind of like a container layer for other shapes up in the toolbar I'm gonna click on this little shape button and you'll see some of these icons have a little triangle in the bottom right corner that means there's some extra tools there if you just click and hold you'll see that uh, I can go to the ellipse tool and I can go down here and click and drag and draw what will become my speech bubble I'm gonna rename this layer down here to stay organized and I want to give this kind of a cartoony look. So I'm going to uh, go into the stroke properties. Stroke is like an outline. And I want to make sure that the color is black. If it's not, you can change it here. And I just want to bring up that stroke width a little bit. Also, the circle is nice, but I want to uh, I want to draw a little point coming off the end, so I don't need it to be a circle anymore. I just want it to be a regular Bezier path. If I right click on it and click Convert to Bezier Path, I can now go into and click on my Pen tool up here. And if I hover over the edge of the path now, you'll see I get a little plus sign. I can add a point. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And then if I middle click with the mouse button, I can kind of scroll over. If you don't have a three button mouse, you can use a combination of the zoom parameter down here and the hand tool up here. That way you can kind of zoom in and pan around uh, manually. So that's a good tip too. I'm going to add another point. And then in between those two points, I'm going to add a third point. You can see when I add that third point, the... Uh, the pen tool temporarily changes into a selection tool and allows me to drag that out. So I've got my little speech bubble now. And again, all these properties down here, everything down here that you see can be animated over time. Like all this can be keyframed. So you can get pretty complicated with the keyframes. I'm going to close up this shape layer just to kind of clean up our timeline down here. Now let's add some text. I'm going to click on my text tool up here, and I'm going to click where I want my text to go. I'm going to type Moo. Now I already did this tutorial once, so I do have the uh, I do have the text I kind of want. But uh, if I click on the selection tool and I make sure the text layer is selected, like if I want to move it around or after I get done typing or something, there is a character panel over here on the side. If you're ever looking for a panel and you can't find it, the, uh, the window menu up here will give you access to all those. And this is uh, obviously uh, how you can uh, resize the size. You can you know, tweak, the, tweak the color a little bit or uh, you can do other things with it too. So what I want to animate now is I want to animate the text and the speech bubble to kind of grow on. Like the cow kind of comes into the frame, stops moving, and the text and speech bubble just grow. So if I control click on both of these layers and hit my S hotkey, you can see scale comes up. And if I click and drag on this, you can see if I were to scale these up and down, it doesn't, it doesn't quite work the way that we want it to. We need both these layers to kind of be working as one layer. So I'm going to do something called parenting, and I'm also going to use something called a null object. Now, these two really simple concepts can do a ton of different things for you in After Effects and are actually foundations of a lot of motion graphics and uh, concepts in general. So these are like good foundational things to learn. I'm going to right click and go to new and null object. And you can see my null object show up here in the timeline, and it's also in the center of the composition here. 
Now, the purpose of a null object is just sometimes you need a blank layer to control other layers, and you do that through a process called parenting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to parent the text object and the speech bubble to this null object. And I'm going to say, I want this speech bubble. See this little spiral here? This spiral, if I click and drag it and drop it on top of the null object, makes this bubble a child of the null object. Now, anything this null object does, if I click and move it around, the bubble will follow. Control Z. The moo hasn't been parented yet. I'm going to do the same thing with the moo. I'm going to click on this pick whip and I'm going to drop it. And now you see when I move that parent object, the children will always follow. If I hit S, I can control the scale and this is what I want to animate. But I don't want to animate it uh, just a simple 0 to 100 scale. Um, I want to give it a little bit of personality and make it a little bit fun. So we're, we're going to give it like a little bit of weight as it moves. So we'll kind of do this in steps. And we'll start with animation level 1, which is just two simple keyframes. Start the scale at 0, and then maybe over the course of, you know, a couple frames, it, it scales up to, you know, 100%. And that's our... You know, but that's like super boring, right? So something that might be a little more interesting is if within the first, you know, three frames, we blow it up to bigger than 100%. And you can see if I have the timeline indicator parked on a, a place where there's no keyframe and I change a property, it'll automatically add a keyframe for me. So I want this to blow up bigger than 100%. That way it kind of blows up and then settles into place gives it a little bit more of like a cartoony feel, right? And then I'm gonna right click on this last keyframe here and go to Easy Ease In. And if I go into my graph editor here, uh, and this is the zoom button, I can zoom in. And you can see it's a little bit weirder graph here, but um, that's because those first two keyframes are normal and the last two um, actually goes into uh, I don't know, it goes into like a negative or whatever reason, but the principle is still the same. Um, you know, we want that last ease into that final keyframe, super, super long, um, and that sharp kind of bell curve at the front end of it. Yeah, and now you can see the way Moo comes in just, just has a lot more life and personality to it. If you want to select more than one keyframe, you can actually click and drag a, a box around them, uh, or you can actually click on the property over here and that'll select all of them. So I want these keyframes just to happen a little bit earlier. Mr. Cow kind of stops right around here, and I think right around here is where I, I want it to be on already. Now to finish this off, I'm going to right click and go to import. I have uh, this one little piece of footage that I thought was pretty funny. I'm going to bring this in um, and I'm going to drag and drop it into the composition and I'm going to reorder this layer and just put it on the bottom there so a background. I'm going to press S, scale it up so it takes up the background and now we have our cow kind of sitting in a pasture with all of his buddies. And doesn't that look relaxing? So I'm going to show you one more thing that's kind of the uh, core concept of, of After Effects and will help you do a lot of things and I'll actually show you how it can help us. Right now our timeline's getting a little, well, not crazy messy. I, I mean, sometimes there's hundreds of layers, but there is a way we can clean this up a little bit and that's with something called pre-comping. Basically making a composition with things that are already in here. So if I, if I control click uh, these top three layers, because I want all these layers to become one, uh, so I need the speech bubble, I need the text layer, and I need the null object. If I right click and go to pre-compose, I'm going to call this speech. Speech bubble animation. And there are a couple options here depending on what you want to pre-comp, but they'll make more sense when uh, when you actually have to, you know, do use them. 
Um, and now you can see it collapsed those three layers into one. Um, and if I double click on this layer, you'll see it'll open a new tab here and I can still manually edit and play with everything the way it was. Um, but the nice thing about it, uh, now is again, it all, it all acts as one. All the keyframes are now over here. If I hit you, you can see that's where my keyframes are. So this, this doesn't have any keyframes at all. These are scale keyframes, but back here in the original, if I hit S, there are no more scale keyframes. So if I want to change the size of it after the fact, that animation will still remain intact. And and you can also do you can like you can duplicate it. If I hit Control D and duplicate it a bunch of times, I can you know click on one, uh, maybe move it down here, scale it down, and uh, you know maybe now his uh, you know his cow friends are, are also saying moo. You know I'm gonna click all three of these. I'm gonna hit S to scale them all down. What's that? Twenty one percent. Yeah, down like that. You know, and I'll maybe. You can kind of edit these uh, timeline layers too. So let's say, like, I want to, I want to. Um, I want to make a cut where where all these uh, all these moves first start to come on. Uh, if I click on the layer I want to cut and hit Control Shift D, that makes a big old slice and kind of slices those layers. And I actually don't want the first part of any of these. So if I just uh, hit click on them and hit delete, I, you can see I'm deleting these. Um, now I can also I can move layers. And you can see I'm actually moving this entire layer. Or if you hover over the edge, you can actually extend that back um, to its original uh, place. A nice, another nice shortcut is if you're moving something in the timeline and you just hold Shift, you can it'll snap for you. So you can. Uh, it's a nice way of uh, lining things up without having to, you know, zoom all the way into the frame level. Okay, so uh, let me move this back here. And now that I know the starting point for each one of these little moo animations, I can kind of offset them so they start at kind of different points in time. So maybe like he comes in and says moo and his friends all kind of respond after him. This guy needs to happen a little sooner. Like a greater concentration of responses. Yeah, that's all right. Another thing that's really nice about pre-comps is uh, if I double click on any one of these and go in here and like say I make a change to something, uh, since that same pre-comp is referenced multiple times, uh, it will change it more than once. So this is pre-comps are also a really good way of uh, replicating and kind of duplicating things if you have to do multiple things uh, in a project or across multiple projects. So. It's another nice thing. Pre-comps are pretty powerful. So I'll show you one more really quick concept um, because because uh, it's another important one. And actually, I think that's uh, other outside of 3D, which I'm not even going to go near on this uh, short tutorial. I'm going to show you guys how to make a track mat here. Uh, and a mat layer is pretty much where you're just taking the information in one layer and using it to cut out the layer below it. I'm going to start with the shape layer here. I'm just going to make a circle that scales in size. So I'm going to grab my ellipse tool here and just make kind of a rough circle. It doesn't even have to be a circle as long as it's kind of centered. And if I click on my shape layer and hit S, you'll see I, you know, I can scale it up and down. I'm going to start this scale at 0% and I'm going to add a keyframe here. And moving into, I would say just before cow guy comes on, I would say right about here, I want this scale to be up to the point where it's fully making the screen white. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this circle as a wipe to wipe on that background. And instead of uh, the cow layer being below the circle, I'm, I'm gonna change it down here. I'm, I want the, uh, the layer the circle is about to obscure has to be just below it. So a track mat is a layer that is cutting out the layer below it. And that's what this column is right here. If you don't see this column, you can click on this little button here. And I want to track mat the alpha mat. Now the alpha means the, just the part of the image that's transparent. 
So I want to track map the part of the image that's transparent of the layer above it. And you can see when I do that, it changes the icon a little bit and it also mutes the layer above it. And you can see as I go through this animation now, you'll see wherever that circle lives, that's where the image will also live. Now, if you don't, if you want to do it the other way, you can do alpha inverted. And you can do it like that too. That might be a good way to end it. But for right now, I'm just going to keep it on alpha mat. And yeah, track mats are also a really, really powerful tool in After Effects. If you're wondering what luma mats are, luma mats do the same thing, but instead of that uh, transparent channel, like that alpha channel, um, they do you do it with black and white values. Uh, so for example, I'm going to go to like new, add a solid here. And I'm just going to call it um, transition or trans. And if I go up here to, oh, this is also a good opportunity to talk about effects too. So if I go to effects and presets over here, uh, you can see this is where all our fun like effects are and stuff. And I'm going to do something called a fractal noise. You can, you can search, obviously. Um, fractal noise. And if you click and kind of drag it and drop it on the layer you want it to affect, you can see... Fractal noise just gives us kind of a, you know, a cloudy image of crap, but um, it's an image you can control. So basically what I want to do, um, I'm, I want to animate this and make this image go from full black to full white. So I'm going to go down here to, oh yeah, also, um, when you drag an effect on, there's going to be an effect palette over here. And this just gives you a good look of, of all the capabilities of a certain effect. But it's also important to know that all these parameters, or at least properties, are also existing down here as well. Now I know I'm going to do contrast and brightness, so I think at 0% I'm going to put keyframes on both of those. And I think this is probably effect is probably going to take about, I don't know, maybe 11 frames to happen. Um, and I'm going to add two keyframes here too. Um, and I just, I'm just timing out the effect right now. I'm not sure exactly what it will look like, but I know what I want it to do. So on this, on these keyframes, I got to do something with brightness and contrast to get it to full white and brightness seems to be the trick. And if I scroll back, I can see here it kind of goes, but not what, how can I get it to full black? If I just brightness down there, there we go. So now I have kind of an interesting way of it going from full black to full white. Now if I drag this layer down just above the cow layer, the cow layer will, alf will track mat whatever layer is above it. So if I sneak that in there, I want it to be a luma mat. Luma mat looks at black and white values. I want to make sure my track mat is muted. And as I scroll through the timeline here, you'll see that black and white information now kind of controls the transparency. I'm going to toggle this background back to black so we can see this a little bit better. Right. Yeah, so that's alpha mats and luma mats. Uh, good to know the difference between the two and how to use them. Now to get back to the way things were, I'll delete this solid that has the effect on it. And because the shape layer above it that has that circle on it is still muted and above the track mat, it'll work just fine. And you know what? To make it really cartoony, let's, uh, let's add like a little border around the outside here. Um, I'm going to take my shape layer here because I want to use the same circle and same animation. And I'm going to click Control D to duplicate it. And because it's a duplicate of that track mat, it'll be automatically muted. I want to turn it back on. And if I go into the properties down here and I go to contents, I should be able to turn the fill layer off. And the stroke layer I want, let's pick a color from the palette, like a green. And stroke width, bring that up a little bit. And now I've got... Now I've got a very, very cartoony animation. I'm going to show you guys how to render this out to a file. You can see down here in the timeline, there's uh, these little uh, handles that you can kind of move around. Uh, you can do hotkeys too with B as an in point and N as an out point. 
Um, so anything in between those handles is what, what's going to render. So um, you can see each one of these panels has like a blue box around it. Um, so whatever, you know, whatever panel has that blue box is what is uh, kind of active. So if this comp down here is active um, and you go to composition and add to render queue and uh, now you'll see this stuff kind of show up in the render queue tab. Um, you could also do it this way too. If you're in the project tab, you can go through tabs this way, but it's also kind of hiding over here. But if you're in the project tab and you have cow animation or your, your comp clicked on, uh, you can go to composition and add to render queue that way too. And it'll put the same composition down there. Um, you can also uh, drag and drop stuff in there too, which is kind of nice. So uh, sometimes there's some presets uh, sometimes if you don't see one you like, I usually end up making my own, so I click on the text here. I'm almost always on QuickTime and uh, almost always on ProRes. If I'm doing something with a, a transparent background, I'll do animation and then make sure there's a, a alpha channel. So I was talking about alpha channels earlier, but usually uh, ProRes 422 will be the best size. Uh, you can't really do MP4s or H.264 files out of After Effects. It's uh, After Effects is just image based, so it uh, only does image sequences, it doesn't really do compression, so you have to make your H.264s and MP4 files uh, somewhere else. But it's always good to have a master animation anyway at full quality. Uh, so yeah, I'll click on this text here. You know, I already did this once, but I'll overwrite what I did because this one's better. You click render, and then you'll see the uh, animation go through and do its thing. And uh, yeah, that's how uh, that's how you render. And yeah, I think other than uh, other than 3D, there were a lot of core concepts here that I kind of got to cover. And yeah, I'm really glad you guys got through it with me. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it was clear. If you have any questions, let me know. Make sure to subscribe and like and hit the bell and all that. I'll do tutorials a whole lot. But I did just want to give you a place to go where you can uh, kind of see the very, very basics of After Effects from someone who knows what it's like to do tons and tons of tutorials. And, uh, who you know, when you do these things, I know you just want to get animating and get working and not get into the nitty gritty details. You just want to know how to use the shit. So uh, that's kind of what I was trying to do here. I will put some links and stuff in the description. Um, and yeah, cheers, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you soon.